Hey guys, Jeff from Beer Cartel here, uh, video live from Beer Cartel HQ in Artarman in Sydney, Australia, if you're uh, viewing from overseas. Uh, we had a slight technical difficulty, so apologies about that. I had uh, put the mic back in and it seemed to cut out the audio completely. So I'm going to do a retake on the video that I just did, uh, and with the audio it should be a hell of a lot better. Um, so I was just talking about uh, the beers that we got in this week. Um, Oh, just before I go into that, uh, you might see the scenery is a little bit different compared to previous videos that I've done. Uh, the one on Tuesday where I talked about the Avila uh, Sierra Nevada um, Abbey Ale series or the gift pack was done upstairs in our in a room in our video room. Uh, this one today I'm just doing out here in our um, in our packing bays or in our warehouse. Um, and you can see these are our packing bays. So if you order online from us, these are where your online orders get picked and packed and shipped out to you. We've got about six of these sort of packing bays, uh, and we use them every day to get good beers out to you, good people. Um, the beers this week, as you can see, we've got some beers from Deschutes. I got some uh, from Epic. Um, in New Zealand, we've got some uh, Sierra Nevada, a four-way pack that I'll talk about um, a little bit later on. Uh, we've got some beers from Liberty. Uh, Liberty are also a New Zealand brewery. And uh, these beers, we have had some of these beers before, but they're in smaller formats. So if you've been a bit put off in the past by having to spend so that, that 13 to $15 mark for a larger bottle on something that you're not 100% sure that you'll like, uh, they've now released them in 330ml bottles, um, so those are available online, so they're, they're new in terms of the, the packaging format, um, but they are beers that we have had uh, in the past. Um, and then stone beer, so stone and wood stone beer. Uh, this is the first beer I'm going to talk about today. So that's stone beer from Stone and Wood in Byron Bay in New South Wales. Um, what's that, six, six or so hours drive north from here. Um, so Stone Beer is an annual release that Stone and Wood do. They started in 2009 and every year they change the recipe just a little bit. Um, and it's a beer release that I always look forward to. It's always a dark beer, so perfect uh, as it, goes, it gets into the sort of winter series, but you could drink it all round, uh, year round, so it wouldn't be a problem. Um, I actually still have a bottle of this from last year, um, so I think they might put best before dates on them, I'm not quite sure, but you could uh, have a couple now and uh, hold on to one uh, and cellar it and then have it next year and see what they're like side by side because they do change the recipes. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of stone beer um, or stein beers. So stone... Um, in German is Stein, and Stein beer is actually a, it's not exactly a, a type of beer, but it's a type of brewing process. So if it arcs back to the kind of Middle Ages or centuries ago, where um, brewers didn't have all the nice shiny stainless steel that they've got these days, um, and they used to typically brew kind of in sort of wooden vats. And you can imagine that trying to raise water, uh, which is one of the key ingredients in beer, um, up to boiling point um, by putting a fire under a wooden vat, uh, just could, wouldn't kind of work really well. So what they used to do is they used to get these wooden vats, uh, fill it with water, which is the, the, one of the base ingredients for beer, and then they would basically heat up um, stones, red, red hot in a fire, uh, very close to, to where the, the, um, the pot of water was, um, and they would basically get these red hot stones and they'd dip them in, then reheat them and dip them in. They would have continually circulating, I guess, fresh hot rocks into the boil, and that's how they would continuously get a boil happening um, for the beer to be made. And Brad Rogers, one of the co-founders and head brewer of um, Stone & Wood, in 2009 he decided that he would do a, uh, I guess, an ode to stone beer or stein beers, um, and he had brought back some volcanic rocks from Fiji and his luggage, and he decided that he would um, he would basically do, do a stone beer or a stein beer. And so what they do every year now, um, since 2009, they um, get the local community um, and friends and family up near the brewery in Byron Bay, um, and they get them together and they have the Festival of the Stones. So the Festival of the Stones is they're getting people together and just having a bit of a good time, and they create fires uh, within their sort of the parking lot there near the brewery, and they heat up these stones that Brad has used year after year uh, in these fires, and then in the brew house they've actually got nice stainless steel um, kettles, um, and as that's kind of uh, boiling away, they rouse the, the, um, the boil even a little bit further by dropping these hot rocks. So they've got the hot rocks that have been in a bit of like a, a metal cage, um, that are, are kind of glowing red hot that they then drop into the kettles. And you can imagine the water kind of really gets agitated. And what you get as a result is you get um, beers that kind of, uh, the flavour of sort of caramelised malt sugars within the wort, um, which is the base of the beer. 
um, and it gives it kind of uh, yeah caramelly flavours as well as you might get uh, hints of sort of smokiness. They then um, sterilise those stones and then they do the same process but now in the fermenters. They've transferred the beer, the beer is now in the fermenters and it's fermenting away and they do the exact same thing. So they drop the beer, the, the, um, the hot stones into the fermenters um, and that gives it probably a bit more of a sort of toffee flavour. So it's a dark beer available online and in store, about $11 a, a piece. We do have a limit of three per person, um, and the reason for that is that we want to try and share the love of uh, the stone beer and make sure that as many people can get some. Um, so it's dark beer expects sort of kind of rich, caramelly, chocolatey, toffee um, characteristics. And as I said, you could have one now and hold on to a bottle um, for next year and kind of have it side by side uh, with next year's release. So May every year these are released. Very good beer to, to, uh, to try. The next lot of beers I want to talk about is the Epic range. So Epic, if you know about Epic, they're based in New Zealand. Um, and Epic have, uh, have been referred to by some as a one-trick pony. So that's two of their beers. These are the latest releases into Australia. So you've got Eric the Red, which is a red IPA. And then you've got the Jackhammer, or the uh, Stonehammer, sorry. Not the Jackhammer, the Stonehammer. And why are they called, uh, well, why has Luke um, an Epic Brewing? So Luke's the head brewer and owner. Uh, he purchased the brand back in, I think, about 2007. Um, he doesn't actually own his own stainless steel or brewery, but he does use another, another person's brewing facility. So kind of like a gypsy or contract brewer, if you want to uh, term it that way. Um, and in 2012, a beer writer sort of said to him or wrote about him and said, uh, that he was a one-trick pony, and the reason for that is he's kind of known for releasing a lot of hoppy, hoppy beers. Um, so these ones, they are both IPAs, and he has done other things. He has done um, Imperial Stouts and so forth, and Strong Ales and whatnot, um, but he is known for his hoppy beers. It's what he likes, fair enough. Why not brew what you like? Um, and a lot of us do like IPAs. He makes them very, very well, um, and they're the two latest releases. He also teamed up. So this is IPA for the better. Um, and this is with Eight Wide, Epic, um, Hop Federation, and Liberty. So that's four-way IPA. So it uses four hop varieties and four malts into the recipe for that one. Again, another one to look out for. And the last set of beers I want to go through. Some of these may look familiar to you. The first two should look reasonably familiar if you had uh, some IPAs uh, from Sierra Nevada before. So one is the Hop Hunter, and the other one is the Torpedo. So both those are IPAs. This is their kind of, this has been in their range for quite some time, the Torpedo. That's their extra IPA. The Hop Hunter was probably, I think, released last year. Um, and this is, takes a slightly different take on the traditional um, brewing process um, and the hops that are used and so forth. So what they decided to do is they actually decided to use hop oils. So instead of uh, kind of using, using uh, f uh, frozen or fresh uh, hop hops, they actually use distilled hop oils. So when they actually have the harvest, um, next to the harvester, they've basically got like a, an oil press, and that oil press squeezes out as much of that fresh sort of hop oil um, that it can, and then they, use, they keep those in, in refrigerated containers, and then throughout the year, they use, use that sort of fresh hop oil um, to then add it to the beer. So it's a, uh, a very different, different way of, of brewing. Um, and as far as I know, they're kind of the, they were the first ones to, to use that process um, and possibly still the, the only ones to use it um, at the moment. They have their Ruthless Rye, which is a rye IPA. So that's a seasonal release, gets released once a year. Um, and it comes in this four pack. So rye will, is added to the malt bill during the brew and rye will give it a bit more sort of um, spicy characteristics as well as a bit more body to it. So it's a very, very nice one. I had that one the other, the other night um, and it's tasting great. And the last one in the four pack. So these are a four pack, uh, 21.99 off the top of my head. Um, we've broken them down from a 12 pack, which is the way they get delivered to us. Um, and so a four pack is, is quite a nice way of buying them. Um, and the last one, is the five hop experimental. So obviously five hops are used in this, but uh, the experimental part is because uh, you may or may not know that um, hop varieties, before they actually get released to, uh, for commercial sale, they are kind of sort of experimental. And by that, 
um, they might have a product code of HBC 432 or something along those lines. And the hop growers and so forth will want to make sure that over time, the hop and the hop oils that it produces and the alpha acids and, and, um, and the yields that they get from their farms is consistent over year from year to year. So what they actually do is they will ensure that, that um, I guess a process is put in place to make sure that before it actually is commercialised, it's kind of used and tested out um, before they will try and, and kind of really make money and, and, and ramp it up. So hops traditionally, about eight to ten years before they'll become commercially available. Um, and this one here has got uh, five experimental hops in it. So again, another interesting one. Um, if you want to try something with uh, hops that uh, are currently not sort of commercialised, so to speak. So they're the beers for this week. Um, as always, available in store and online at beercartel.com.au. Um, another shout out to everyone that's completed our survey. Uh, we've had over 800 people complete the, uh, the Australian craft beer survey for 2016, where we're trying to get an understanding of uh, craft beer trends and what people like and what people do with beer and so forth. Um, so if you haven't completed it and you'd like it to have a chance to win $500 worth of craft beer, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the link in the comments box just below this video when I, when I finish and it's uploaded. Um, and for those of you that have completed it, thanks very much. Uh, you're now in, in, in the draw for, to, to win $500 uh, worth of craft beer. Um, any questions, let me know. If there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover off, please let me know as well. And again, thanks for watching. Oh, one last shout out. If you're going to Gabs, I'm going to be there on, uh, on Saturday. So Gabs in Sydney. I'll be there all day Saturday. I might do a couple of live broadcasts from there, myself and Rich. Um, I look forward to catching up with some of you there. Um, and if you are going and I don't see you, enjoy yourself. And again, thanks for watching.